What? I've got something. It was all like pew pew pew, but now it's like no pew. Can you fix it? Please? Right, so today we're cracking on with uh, tearing down and looking at Amateur's G&G L85 AFV, the itty bitty L85. Let's get this on the table. Right, one of the things I'm going to point out straight away is this has been Alice's main gun for what, four and a half years now and she's never really properly surfaced it and both the body pins are missing. This is the one that holds the gearbox in, this is the one that holds the upper and lower receiver, receiver together or as uh, most squaddies know it, the uh, TMH to the rest of the rifle. It's trigger mechanism housing. Yes, heresy has been committed. There is a EOTech on here as a put. Eotech clone on here as opposed to Susan. Anyway, we're gonna pop the rear body pin out and then just slide that off that, like that. Easy enough to do. And that reveals our gearbox in the TMH. You see the MOSFET we fitted here. This is a, uh, I think it's an AAB. Alice keeps telling me it stops working, stops firing, but every time I test it, it seems to work fine. And in fact, so I've got one of her 1300 sticks here. We are set to R on there, which is repetition, and we're good to go. So I'll just hold this in place and it seems to be firing fine. Let's try that for water as well. Yeah, it seems fine. Anyway, we'll take it apart, give it a good clean, and it really the blowback feature is still active in the set sense that the carriage is on here, but the hook and spring are missing, so it doesn't actually blow back the bolt. Uh, but it's still there, covering that spring and stopping ingress of dirt and mud. And that's pretty much the uh, TMH done. We don't really need to worry about that. Although, there is some um, symptoms of gunk and muck in the bottom of that, which looks kind of like carbon buildup from the motor uh, and just general dirt, dirt and detritus. And um, we'll get to clearing that out in a minute, but I'm going to put that to one side. And we are left with the uh, gearbox and the wire assembly there, and the upper part hit. So we'll put that to one side. There we go. You can see lots of gunk inside the back of the gearbox. That's that's never good, is it? Um, also seeing a fair bit of carbon build up on these uh, motor terminal covers. Oh, look at that. Uh, now this is slightly different in terms of wiring to a standard L85 or at least pre-ETU L85 because the L85 had a funky wiring system whereby you uh, had a, another wire coming up here to this contact point here and the idea was that when the trigger was released this would make contact with the part of the switch that then went to the motor so you then get a looped circuit that would run out of this contact of the switch to the motor through the motor out of that contact to here and back through. Short circuit basically means that you have um, you have the current circulating and current for magnetic fields. So as the motor is spinning spinning down, not under power anymore, it's generating a current which is being pumped through there, which is generating an opposing magnetic field to the magnetic field of the motor, which breaks the motor effectively and slows it down quite nicely. Um, Good idea in theory, but using different voltage batteries and stuff can cause all sorts of issues. And that was the primary cause of the lockup you get on the original L85. So to take your motor off, it looks like there are three screws, but there are only two to actually get the motor cage off of the um, rest of the gearbox. So we'll just take these out quickly. Put that to one side, and that will spring out nicely. So you know, that motor's got barely any turnable resistance. It goes up to the battery. And then this is our trigger here now. So just hold that. Ah, uh, yeah, there is a couple of dead spots on this motor. So this motor is an X motor really. So let's get this motor out of this cage and get a new one in there. 
So you've got these little uh, latches here that just needs to be slid apart, take apart. Obviously, the motor can get in the way, so we're just going to loosen that off. Place that the motor adjust type, and that should now hopefully come apart. There we go. That's the motor cage open, and there we have our motor and our motor plate, which is important. Otherwise, when you tighten up, your motor adjustment screw you actually push on the shaft of the motor which is a big no-no so i have a like for like motor here um this one came out of the mp5 i feel that i don't know if you can hear that hang on i'll put a chest mic on that's got very definitive steps to it as opposed to this one the steps are a lot weaker you can still kind of hear them but they're not as strong so I had to dig through some of my uh, boxes of stuff and found this, which is a brand new A22 TPA long type motor, which is more on the talky side, but pretty good for this. Um, actually, I think it's supposedly meant to have the same sort of RPM as the uh, GNG, although I will say it is using much stronger magnets as opposed to the original GNG and Has a much stronger clip to it. So let's uh, drop this in. Now let's remember. So that goes through to this side. So we want to have negative on this side, positive on that side. And uh, just remember which way this goes. This that way up. So we want negative like that, positive like that. So it's going to sit in there like that. Good, hunky dory. Flip that over. Come up. Get that in. Get those two locking tabs lined up and pop that on. There we go. So that's ready to go on when we need it. So we'll put that to one side and now let's focus on the main gearbox. Not bad at all. Still, we'll take them out, give them a clean, give them a re-grease, but I think that shimming is is certainly fine for that. They're not going to rub or wear. There's pretty good space in there between the set and the spur gear. Uh, okay, let's try and get the light on that. You can see there. All good. So yeah, I think the shimming in this is all right. Um, I vaguely remember doing it several years ago. And the good thing is, because this is a split gearbox, there's barely any tension on it. About the only springs in this are going to be the uh, trigger spring and the anti-reversal latch springs. There we go. Now the two halves should separate quite nicely. I like that. Get the wires out. And there we go. A fair bit of muck in there. Not too bad actually. Let's uh, pop the gears out. And what I'm going to do is just transfer the shims all onto the gear set so we know we've got the shimming right. And that's from there. Oh! Honestly, I'm amazed this is cycling properly. That right there. It's a giant chunk of a broken piston by the looks of it. Most definitely should not be in a gearbox. Yep. That looks like a tooth off of the original piston. Those gears are absolutely fine. They just need a bit of a clean. But those are not taking any sort of damage from that. That's impressive. I am well impressed with that. So yeah, right, that could have been part of the reason why it was sometimes not cycling properly. I'm going to clean this all out. So I'm going to go find the uh, white spirit because I'm going to need it for this and then uh, get back to it. So see you in a moment. Right, so that's that, the main part of the gearbox back together. So um, you put those screws, screws back in. Happy with that, that, that is nicely greased. Not too much play in the gears, all good there. So that's good, so we can uh, let that be. Let's put the motor back in, actually. So yeah, 
Now we can see that there's a kink in the black wire and that's because that kink sits in here, which is a nice crossover point for the negative wire to come around and hook onto the motor, which we have inexplicably managed to install the wrong way round. I'm sure it's the right way round, unless the social one. Uh, everyone laugh at the idiot that is Ben. Never get the right way round. And then drop the black wire through. Good, good. And then we can run it on this nice little T-slot runner. So yeah, it looks like the 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 pin yeah the pinion on the new motor is just a wee bit big compared to the entrance hole. Oh my! Oh my my my! However, just a bit of brute force got it through there. Um, I know that's not the best, but hey ho, let's get this working. Uh, push that in. Oh, there, it's started to free up properly now. So we can drop that in and get one of the gearbox screws in. And we can tighten that one up. Let's drop the other one in. Get that nice and tight. This is probably going to... Actually, you know what? I'm not going to spin it up yet. What am I thinking? We need to work on the amount of gear wobble between the motor pinion and the bevel gear. So I'm going to release the uh, anti-reversal latch. So you've got a fair amount of play in that. So let's put the motor under some more tension into it. And hopefully that wobble should reside. Just give it a bit more. Yeah, that is now resting on the motor quite nicely. Not too much play. Any of that is actually trying to turn the motor. It's clear. Very snappy semi-auto and respectable full auto rate. Let's just uh, reset that nicely. Excellent. Disconnect that. Right, that is the lower half done. Ready, ready to go back in the gun. That's one thing I was going to do before we did that. Give this well a good old wipe. Make sure most of the gunk is out from under there. That's mainly all carbon burn from the old motor. So that's back together and ready to fire. So we know it's clear because we've just had it part, but even so we should probably have it in a safe direction. Uh, the is now resting into the chrono box. Sounds healthy and it's flicking to full auto. That's all good. I am happy with that. That seems good. Let's see what the owner thinks. Right, well, it's back together. It's all done. Thank you. Should all be working. Oh, wait, hang on, actually. These, uh, these finally showed up and they're now the new bolts. How you lost these, I don't know. Well, that one's easy because you take it out and then it just sort of disappears. And what about the gearbox one? I don't even the know it gearbox was, I didn't even know it could come out. <laughs> so I didn't really check when it went missing. <laughs> so the main thing I've done is the motor was dead. I found a dead spot in it. That's why it wouldn't cycle occasionally. So motor is switched out, uh, which means not only does it work, but it actually has now a higher rate of fire and oh, okay. a better tree response. So, yeah, I did notice it was starting to go a little bit funny towards the end, and that's the reason why it stopped working. <laughs> so, do you want to check it out? Make sure is it's- a battery in it? No, let's grab a battery. Oh, what? Again, this is the same 1300 that I've been using throughout testing. Yay. Happy? I am happy. And also, during the rebuild, I managed to find you your uh, well, foregrip. foregrip slash bipod. Grip yeah. pod. Grip pod. Yeah, it sort of came off and I just never thought to put it back on. Oh, I know I'm going around. I was trying to see where the button was. No, I made it too close. I can't do a tactical deployment. Yeah, yeah I can. <laughs> Fabulous. Thank you. So, happy? Yeah, very happy. And hopefully I'll live another five years. Five years. <laughs>
you're still here. But the the video is over. It's done. Go go home. Oh wait, before you do, um, instead, why don't you consider watching one of my other videos, or even uh, subscribing on the link down below.